Bangladesh has been going through a very tough political period in the recent months. The two main parties are blaming each other for the ongoing violence. In this context, I'm speaking to Lisa Curtis, a senior research fellow at Heritage Foundation based in Washington, D.C. Lisa, welcome to our show. Thank you for having me. As I was saying, that Bangladesh has been going through a very tough time, and the two main parties, they're in a deadlock situation. Since the violence continues, how do you think a healthy environment for talks can be created? Well, I think the two sides, the ruling Awami League and the opposition BNP, have had plenty of time to hold negotiations on the conduct of the election. That's what has precipitated uh, this violence, a, a great deal of it. Of course, some of it has been precipitated by the uh, International Crimes Tribunal verdicts and the hanging of a Jamaat Islami leader uh, last month. So I think there has been plenty of opportunities for Sheikh Hasina to uh, show some willingness to make some concessions or compromise with the opposition. Uh, but unfortunately, she has dug in her heels and went forward with a very flawed election on Sunday. Uh, voter turnout was less than 30 percent, is my understanding, which is, you know, way below what it was in 2008 when it was close to, um, uh, I think it was close to 86 percent. So that's one indicator that a large part of the Bangladeshi population just did not see this election as fair and transparent and credible. Uh, and the second point is there were no choices. Half of the seats went uncontested. So democracy is about choice. So I don't think that this election represented democracy. I think it was a flawed election. And I think the only way out is for Sheikh Hasina to be willing to negotiate with the opposition for the holding of fresh polls, which will be seen as credible. The interesting thing is, if you look at the history, there was a time in 1996 when this ruling, currently ruling Army League, they were demanding caretaker government, and Khalid Azia was in power at that time, and she was very much against it. And now Khalid Azia is demanding caretaker government, and Sheikh Hasina is against it. So that's an interesting U-turn of both of them, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's very troubling. Both sides are showing that they are not uh, respecting a democratic process. They're in it to get themselves elected. They're in it for the power. They're not thinking about the larger democratic process in Bangladesh. And what that does is that makes the Islamist more appealing, the non-democratic forces in the country more appealing. So, in effect, I think what we will see happening is more Bangladeshis finding some appeal in the Islamist agenda, which is exactly the opposite of what uh, I think Sheikh Hasina is trying to do. Sheikh Hasina came into power trying to restore the pluralistic, um, uh, democratic, uh, some of the secular foundations of the country. But in effect, by holding this flawed election, she's actually reversing that process, unfortunately. And I think her party is losing credibility with the international community over this election. So it's in her interest to find a way to work with the opposition to not repeat the mistakes of the past. Yes, I know, Halida Zia uh, did the same thing when she was uh, seeking power. But that doesn't, two wrongs don't make a right. And I think, unfortunately, if uh, Sheikh Hasina wants to restore that credibility that she once had with the international community, uh, she needs to find a way to work with the opposition and to compromise uh, for some kind of new election. The, the government, in their defense, is saying that this election, this parliamentary election, was constitutionally binding. What do you think of that? Well. Uh, look, it may have been legally binding, uh, you know, to hold the election, but what has been lost is the credibility with the process. And elections do not equal democracy. Uh, it's the way the election is conducted. It's whether or not 
it's inclusive, whether there's full participation, whether the people have a choice, whether it's perceived as being transparent in the way it's held. So I think it, it really is a fallacy to think that, well, just because the Constitution mandated this election, um, it, you know, it's necessary to accept the mandate. No, that's not really what an election is about. That's not what democracy is about. And I think that we see that in the fact that the U.S., the EU, were unwilling to send election observers. That's a strong signal that the expectation was that this would not be a credible election. And in fact, it was not. That, that seems to be uh, what the vast uh, amount of uh, people think both inside Bangladesh and outside Bangladesh. Bangladesh has seen both parties in power uh, by turn, and uh, many ordinary citizens uh, believe that there is not much difference between these two parties. They have, they have been tested, they have been tried. Now, what many people are worried about is the ongoing violence, because you don't have to go on a protest march to be killed. You're just on a car, an ordinary passenger, and you're burned to death. And that has been going on. Do you think this violence needs to stop? How important is that? Absolutely. I think it's um, you know, horrific what's happening in Bangladesh. Uh, the opposition has been calling these transportation blockades, which has precipitated a lot of this violence and hardship and uh, you know, really impacted the economy. So they need to uh, call off these protest demonstrations. But at the same time, Sheikh Hasina needs to be willing to negotiate with them and to figure out a way forward because this election, like I said, it has not been acceptable to the majority of Bangladeshis as well as the international community. And so uh, the only way forward as I can see it is for Sheikh Hasina to work with the opposition to find a formula for holding an election that is perceived as free, transparent, and credible, and in which the opposition agrees to participate. That's the only way forward. Very briefly, what has been the position of U.S. government, U.S. administration so far? Well, the U.S. has continued to call on both sides to negotiate. Um, however, this obviously has not worked. And unfortunately, we don't see uh, any pressure coming on the government to hold a free, fair, and credible election. So I think that the U.S. might have to step up some of its pressure on the government uh, to be able to, to bring about a more inclusive democratic process, because democracy is very important for Bangladesh. Bangladesh is the fourth largest Muslim nation. Uh, it's always, uh, you know, been a good friend of the U.S and has a democratic process. And so for that relationship, the U.S.-Bangladesh relationship to go forward, I think we're going to have to see real democracy come back to Bangladesh. Lisa Cartes, thank you so much for your time. I've been talking to Lisa Cartes, the senior research fellow at Heritage Foundation. Thank you for watching. This is Hassan from Voice of America.